Hello everyone and welcome to my educational channel. Today I'm going to take you through the magnificent drill where you'll be able to look at chest x-ray in a very comfortable and quick way without losing any significant finding. At the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the magnificent checklist points that you need to go through every time you report a chest radiograph to make sure that you don't miss any significant pathology. Now let's start. So before you start reporting a chest radiograph, you need to make sure that the quality of the radiograph is adequate for reporting. And the way we do this is very simple, is by checking that we can faintly draw a, a border around the vertebral body in this region and should be just barely visible. The second thing you need to check for the quality is to make sure that the patient is well centralized and you do this by drawing a line through the spinous processes and then along the medial end of the left clavicle and right clavicle. This space should be the same as you see it's shorter on the left hand side but this is kind of accepted in your day to day practice. You don't expect to see textbook radiograph every time you do a chest uh, radiograph. The third thing you need to check is to make sure that the patient has had adequate inspiration. And the way we do this is we check and count the number of ribs. Usually you should count six ribs on the uh, left-hand side or intercostal spaces. And here we can see six, so this is more than adequate. If this was four or less than five, this means that the patient hasn't had good inspiration. This is important to note because this can make you see certain things look like pathology when they are not. So I will explain all this in my uh, following videos but just let's get on and go through this uh, checklist drill now once we've ensured that the chest radiograph is of a good quality we then can go and crack on and interpret the lung we start by going through the whole lung just make sure this so the whole lung is scanned all the way around and that there's nothing really bulging in or out and there's nothing white blobs or patchy blobs in, in the center here uh, which could represent tumor, cancer, or consolidation, or malignancy. You do the same on the left side, so you go through all the way there. Look inside this box, make sure that you don't see any blobs or cancer or any abnormality. And the best way to look at the lung, ensuring that you haven't missed any significant pathology, is you divide the lung into three zones, upper zone, middle zone, and lower zone, by drawing lines as I'm drawing there. This is upper zone, middle zone, lower zone. Usually the middle zone contains the right and left hilum. And you make sure you compare side for side, make sure they both are symmetrical and look the same. You always have to look uh, between the ribs to look for shadows like this, densities, faint opacity, or any kind of lines, abnormal lines, or opacity. It's very important to make sure that you are having symmetrical bilateral areas. The second thing you need to check, cardiometastinal contour, and you make sure that you kind of follow the cardiac contour and then this should be nice and clear and sharp. You shouldn't see any fuzziness along this cardiometastinal contour. As you come down here, you see the aortic knuckle there, which should be nice and crispy and clear, and the left cardiac border should be nice and clear. Any fuzziness? along this line should make you think that there may be something wrong with the adjacent lung and the most important part you need to check so you don't miss any significant consolidation is this right kind of lower cardiac border because if this is fuzzy like what i'm drawing now this can mean a right middle loop lung pathology we will go through all these pathologies once we've gone to the other sections of the videos uh, which i'm gonna be posting on my educational channel in the very near future. The next checkpoint you need to check is the trachea and this is the gas filled area there where it's bifurcates to the right side and here to the left side and make sure this is in the center and it's not pushed in any direction by any tumor or mass lesion. Then you have a look at the heart to make sure that heart is not enlarged provided this is a posterior anterior radiograph and not an anteroposterior radiograph. I will explain this in my future lectures but just for uh, the purpose of this lecture, make sure that the cardiothoracic ratio, which is the area between here and there, is less than 55%. Uh, this makes sure that uh, if it is larger than this, it means that the heart is enlarged. So this is obviously less than 55%, which means the heart is within normal size limits. Now, after you've done the initial assessment of a good quality radiograph and assess the lung and hearts in general, you need to go to the review areas. And these are very important areas you need to check on every chest radiograph because these areas can really have significant pathology and is usually missed. 
the most important area to start with is the hilum and the hilum is uh, this part dense area there and it's because you've got right hilum and left hilum the left hilum is slightly Higher. the right hilum and this is anatomical variation and this is helpful because if you see the left hilum uh, down here it means there is loss of volume on the left lung or there's something pushing the uh, left hilum the hilum is formed by vessels so this is this is coming from the top this is going down and it's creating this hilar point you can see it's like a v-shaped so always try and create this and look at it and make sure that you have a a, a v-shaped if you do this and then you find something bulging out there that this is a mass and if the patient is rotated you can really overlook this area there so make sure that you create this v-line on the right side and the left side because here you've got some veins coming there arteries going down here and you just cross the dots you've got a v v v-shaped area here so nothing is bulging out. Something else to remember here that the density of the right and left hilum should be the same. So this side shouldn't be denser than this and vice versa. The second part you need to check is the retrocardiac space. And retrocardiac space is this large area there. But the most important part you check initially is this area there behind the heart. You always have to look there for density, for masses, or for any cystic or significant change, something there or here or here any opacity behind the heart you need to explain it for example this shadow there looks like a density which is different to the entire area behind the lung but this one can be explained because it falls on the line of this hilum which means it's a vessel it's the same line same direction and same width and size this is kind of uh, vessels being cut in on this is how it will look like now if you have a uh, if you have a density here which doesn't correspond to any vessel in that area, it means this is abnormal mass. The second most important space is the paraspinal line. You should be able to draw a straight line alongside the vertebrae here. Any bulge you see on any side, it means pathology until proven otherwise. Usually this can be an area for masses, metastasis, or discitis. Which then we'll go to the next step, which is following the diaphragm. So diaphragm is this line there, and usually forms an acute angle on the side here. This is called the costophrenic angle. This should be nice and acute all the time, and this should be straight and sharp. And you have the left diaphragm on this side. You only kind of miss it in this area there, which is where you're allowed to miss it, really. If you have a fuzzy hemidiaphragm here, it means there could be a possibility of a left lower lobe pathology here. It could be collapse or cancer or infection and consolidation. And once you've checked the diaphragm and that is nice and crispy and clear, make sure you check below diaphragm because under the right diaphragm should be the liver. So if you see any gas bubble on this side, something looks like this, it could be an indication that this patient has got an abscess. On the left hemidiaphragm, you got the gastric shadow here and sometimes you can get the colonic shadow here as well. It's also important to note that the right hemidiaphragm is slightly higher than the left hemidiaphragm. So this is again normal. The second step you need to have for chest radiograph is to check the bones. So make sure you check every single bone from posterior to anterior. These are the ribs, all the way right to left, all the way to the bottom there. And make sure you check the clavicles and check the scapula and then check the humerus. Of course, you have to do this bilaterally. And don't forget that the vertebral column is part of the bony uh, assessment. And you have to look for uh, destruction, density, or a fracture the second step to check will be the soft tissue so make sure that we follow the breast shadow there to check for any abnormality or any abnormal bulge check the soft tissue here and the soft tissue in the neck because this is an area where uh, soft tissue tumors can uh, be present and can be missed if you haven't checked carefully and the best and last view area is long apex and the reason I've left this to the last because this is one of the uh, very important zones we call it the lawyers zone because a lot of pathology get missed here by many of the experienced radiologists and the reason this happens is because you've got lots of overlapping bones in this area and faint density can sometimes become very difficult to pick up and detect by your eye if you haven't spent some time in this area you will have usually a faint density there hiding behind the rib and the, and the lung or here or behind the clavicle and the lung and it can be as subtle as this. It wouldn't be as dense as how I'm drawing it right now. It would be very faint density. And therefore, you can really miss it if half of it 
or more than half of it is hiding behind there. This was the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you subscribe, share and like this video and make sure that you hit the notification bell so you get my next video, which is going to be discussing a significant pathology from a clinical day-to-day -day practice. There will be cases from the coroner's court where radiologist and a consultant has been to the court because of their misses and uh, it will become apparent to you after you've had many of these lectures that it's important that you know the drill and follow it so you don't fall in the same trap i hope this was helpful uh, please make sure you leave any questions in the comment box below and share and subscribe as we suggested and see you next time Bye bye Let me take you to the top. Take it to the top and let me take you to the top.